so another true stories and to explain the true stories these are absolutely 100% true stories that occurred in my life one of the reasons why I never really liked doing true stories was because these are things that happened in my life that obviously I can no longer verify or prove but I tell these to the best of my ability without any embellishments, any exaggerations whatsoever. And so um, another thing that I don't really like about the True Story series is the fact that they seem to be less popular than people wanting to see me constantly do demonstrations. And demonstrations are good, but I think it's more important, you know, if you guys want to understand who I am, know more about me, to understand how I came about doing the things that I'm doing now. Well, anyway, <clears throat> this true story isn't so much about me, but it is about um, some of the things that can happen to people if they get stupid when it comes to learning self-mastery. And um, in particular, I was teaching my first apprentice, and this is now <clears throat> towards the end of me teaching this particular person. Um, and I've got a couple more stories that I'm also going to throw in along those lines about him. Because he very much shaped the way that I teach now. Um, I used to teach much differently back then, and I was a lot more extreme in my teachings. I was actually a lot more extreme at that time. Uh, not only with the teachings, but how I would teach. So I did a lot more quote unquote showing off, but I figured out quite quickly that by doing that, what it does is it, it's like dangling a carrot in front of a rabbit all the time. And that person who you're teaching, they want more and more extreme things. They want to see more, they want to experience more. But the thing is, I've said this before, you can, you can only fit a, in eight megabytes of information, eight megabytes. You cannot fit a terabyte of information into something that can only hold eight megabytes. And oftentimes I would sit and uh, teach a certain way and then the student would see that and then expect to be able to do that within like the next week. And that's just not the way things work. Sometimes some of the stuff that I was teaching, it would take years and years for a person to be able to even come close to touching that technique. Well, regardless, so getting to this particular student, he had learned quite a bit and he was my most advanced student. Even to this day, if he hadn't been stripped of what, what he could do, he would be my most advanced student right now. Uh, I haven't met anyone, to be quite honest, even other practitioners who were as advanced as he was at that time. And I've met a whole lot of practitioners, I've met a whole lot of people that uh, call themselves teachers. Um, but I had taught him more than I had taught anybody else. And like I said, I to this day have not met anyone or seen anyone or seen videos of anyone who uh, matched his capabilities and he was still just a beginner. I had taught him for a while, it had been about two years, and when I say taught him, I was teaching him straight, almost every single day we hung out, um, and we would spend hours together, and I, I gave him a lot of my time, a lot of direct information, and the time that we had together was always uh, concentrated and intense, so it wasn't like we hung out for an hour, broke and went and did something, came back for an hour or two later. This would be seven, eight hours straight, sometimes up to 12 hours, 16 hours of training, all day, every day. And he uh, accepted a good portion of it, but as I would find out later, of course, um, like I said before, you can only fit eight megabytes information into something that can hold eight megabytes. Nothing else will go in. So I was basically trying to stomp information into him and knowledge into him when he couldn't take a lot of it 
and he actually had a meltdown. We won't get into that meltdown because there were actually several, but towards the end of it, he started believing himself to be a lot more advanced than what he thought he was, but in the process of that, he also started going negative, and he began using people. He began, um, you know, one of the things that I taught him was telepathy and how to, um, what's the best way to put this? I mean, to communicate with people even though that they don't even know that they're being communicated with, all right? And so, he got to the point where he was doing things that was very close to, um, what's a good way to put this one? It's kind of like hypnosis, but without putting someone under. So you could interject thoughts, ideas, and typically the person would acquiesce to that whether they knew it or not. So they would either uh, take the notion and then um, act upon it. Or, uh, most of the time, he would get some delayed reactions and whatnot, but it was always pretty successful. And so he started taking advantage of mostly older women because he realized that a lot of them were um, lonely, some of them desperate to be with someone. And I had seen this coming beforehand. As a matter of fact, uh, some of his students came to me after a while he had a, a group that he was teaching for a little bit and they came to me and told me that he started taking advantage of them and of them and they wanted me to intervene on him which i did multiple times well finally i came to him one day and i said look your students came to me and i've seen you know a pattern within you for a while of you're wanting to control people and control things and control settings and it's about time that uh, you knock that off and I was extremely specific with him. And I said to take advantage of people, things were, are always gonna come back on you. Two, three, tenfold, sometimes twentyfold, who knows. But I said, if you don't stop, more than likely, I'm going to have to do something to intervene. And I guarantee you that whatever I do, the universe is going to bring it home. It's going to uh, take whatever I did and turn the heat up on it, big time. But I said, cut this stuff out and it got very specific he was implanting ideas for people to give him computers to give him money um, any sort of high dollar physical item he could come up with in his head he would implant those ideas and then the people would do it so he started acquiring a bunch of things a bunch of material goods once again I told him I said if you don't stop this, I guarantee you, you know, I'm going to have to do something about it and the universe is going to follow suit. He just didn't get the message. Well, long story short, because I can't tell you how I do what I do, I'm not going to try to explain it, but I have a thing that I can do that will strip someone of their, their ability to utilize that sort of knowledge. Once I put that into action, and then once I put, how do I put this, um, a karmatic um, program in that kind of just accelerates things, once I did that, then things occurred the way they did. Now, I didn't have anything really specific in mind other than him not just not being able to use the knowledge that I had taught him to take advantage of other people. What the universe did is it systematically stripped him of everything. So, my first apprentice ended up losing his job. He had had uh, unemployment for a while. His un unemployment ran out right then and there too, okay? Uh, so he got stripped of his job, he got unemployment for a little bit, but, counteracted like as quickly as he got it it was taken away then he lost his home all right at that point 
all the money and all the material goods that he had had, he had to sell, he had to get rid of all that stuff just to have money to pay off all these debts that were occurring and, and, and just mounting up on him. Then, of course, the people that he had taken advantage of, and I had told him, I said, uh, here's, here's the one thing that had happened and all that. He realized that he was going to have to, like, basically move out of town, right? And his sister ended up buying him an, uh, an airline ticket to leave from here to go to Texas. And I told him, I said, whatever you do, I understand that you had your, your sister purchase this ticket for you. But I said, whatever you do, do not leave this town without apologizing to the people you took advantage of. And he swore up and down that he was going to. And I said, no, really, I'm trying to tell you this now. Do not do this without having apologized and owning up to what's going on. Otherwise, everything that you're experiencing now is going to get nothing but worse. Well, the reason why I had pushed that and brought it home and said, you need to do this is because I realized that he wasn't going to do it. And I knew that if he didn't do it and he wasn't warned that the universe was just going to do even more. Okay. So sure enough, <clears throat> he decides to bounce out of town without talking to the people that he took advantage of, without apologizing, without getting, you know, their blessings which is something that he should have done because that's only the right thing to do. One moment. So he skated out on that. Well, the universe continued doing what the universe does. And so, at this point, every student, every single person that he had talked to, had even touched remotely during this whole process of, process of him taking advantage of other people, they had all come together. They started talking with one another. Um, it shut down any business opportunities that he had once had because he was still trying to get money. He was still trying to uh, find a way to profit even outside. So when he finally got to Texas, um, there was no one here in Bloomington that wanted to speak with him anymore. They were done with him. And he has family here in Bloomington, so he still comes to Bloomington every once in a while. And all the people that, basically all the connections that he had had, he burned the bridges with. And then, crazy enough, when he finally gets out to Texas, I guess he had pissed his sister off too. She bounced him out of the house and his grandmother, whom he really, really, really loved. Um, probably still, of course, loves. Um, she died within that week. So the week that he had gotten out there. And it was just like a whole incredible landslide that went right underneath him because he had too much pride to apologize because he was taking advantage of people. He knew it was wrong. In fact, it's not just wrong. It, there's a word for it. It starts with an E, ends with an L, okay? He knew better. And so, and understand that I've had other students actually who are just like the way he was. And, you know, I haven't talked to that guy for a long time, so I don't know how he is now. I just know that he has no means of uh, enacting the knowledge that he had learned. But I have run into a multitude of people since then who are just like him. It seems like it's an archetype a model almost, just one spirit that inhabits every single person who is like that. Once they get a little bit of power, once they think that they've learned a little bit of something, they just feel that they can run off and take advantage of others. And that is the one thing that I cannot stand about uh, youthful, ignorant souls, that the first thing that they do when they learn something as amazing as this knowledge is to try to take advantage of another human being. It just blows my mind. And there's people out there who call themselves teachers who do it every single day, okay? There's people out there who, um, the only thing that there is in their soul whatsoever is this aggressive, angry outlook towards people and that people are there just to serve their own particular vices. 
So nonetheless, that's kind of a lesson, you know, when it comes to self-mastery, you have to be responsible, you have to be intelligent, and you have to be willing to help others. Um, and being someone who is self-serving is not going to work out for you very well if you pursue self-mastery as, um, you know, an interest of yours. It's just not going to work out. If you are a negative person and the only thing that you can think about is taking advantage of others, then going the route of self-mastery is going to be more detrimental for you than it is for anyone around you. So know that. Understand it. Michael Grubb, True Stories. Goodbye.